January 1st, 2022, and I'm coming to you from Maya Bay, and it's a special day because this marks the first day that Maya Bay has been open in almost three years. So before the pandemic, the Thai government shut down Maya Bay. Why? Because the entire ecosystem had died. All the coral reef, all the fish, all the sharks, all the natural habitat had died. And if you look back at pictures from three years ago with all the tourists on this beach, you can see why that happened. Maya Bay used to get 6,000 tourists a day and it pretty much killed the entire ecosystem. So now it's the grand reopening and they're doing this reopening by putting sustainability in the environment first. So there's some new rules for visiting Maya Bay, which I will share with you shortly. And just up here, we have a volunteer from Ocean Quest, Mary's, and she's going to describe uh, some of the work that the volunteers did to help restore the coral reef here. My name is Marie's, I work for Ocean Quest and I help to restore the area in Maya Bay. Three years ago, we started a project and Maya Bay was completely destroyed. No coral, no fish, no sharks, no nothing. And Ocean Quest and all the volunteers come here. At the beginning, everything was dead. So we plant coral and we rebuild the reef. So now you can see all the brown patch. We almost plant all this coral. This project has been successful because the fish are come back, the reef are come back, the shark are come back, and the nature come back on the island. So we hope uh, it can be a beautiful example for the next ecotourist. Uh... So thanks to Mary's and her team at Ocean Quest and all the volunteers, the Maya Bay ecosystem is making a comeback. It's rebounding. You have coral reef, you have natural species. They're all coming back. A little backstory on when the destruction began of Maya Bay with all the tourism. It was really the result of the movie called The Beach that starred Leonardo DiCaprio. If you remember the scene in that movie, he was sitting right here uh, with his fellow actors admiring this pristine beach. But when they set up the scene, they actually ripped out a bunch of the uh, natural, what they called shrubs or bushes, and they planted some trees. But what they did when they did that, when they ruined the landscape, the natural landscape, sure enough, the water eroded those areas and Maya Bay lost most of its beach. And then part two was once the movie was distributed around the world, that's when 6,000 tourists started showing up right here every day. Uh, but it's, uh, there's new rules now. The environment comes first. And I'm gonna share with you a little more description on not only how to get here, uh, but what those rules are, it's now capped. So you no longer are allowed just to have boats come into this uh, bay. And there's a limited number of people that can come here each day. If we look at the pandemic, we know there's been a real significant human toll, but it's also been a really good thing for places like Maya Bay, because now at Maya Bay, the coral reef is back. There's like all these little sharks that don't bite you that are swimming around here in the ocean. You can actually see them. So a lot of the natural habitat is being restored. So as you can see, tourism is returning to Maya Bay, but it's really controlled. Uh, a lot fewer people, Lake, hey, go Lakers. Hey. How's it going? Great. Good, good. So uh, where are you from? I'm from Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. And what brought you to Maya Bay? So I've been dreaming about this place for more than five years, come to, here to Thailand. And actually, this is like one of the best places I want to visit here. Being here, like right now, there's not a lot of people. That's great. But, and I know. I love it. I love it. So Juan from Mexico, uh, long ways from home. Yeah. Where's your next stop? My next stop is going to be Riley. And then after? And then after Chiang Mai, go up north. Cool. Thanks, Juan. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can see tourism is coming back and uh, it's just gonna be a lot more controlled. It's the way it should be. And for those of you who went to Maya Bay uh, before, uh, you know it was too crowded. You couldn't even enjoy it. But this right here is really enjoyable. If you take a look around, not too many people, empty beach. You gotta plan a little bit uh, ahead of time uh, with the app and whatnot, but it's well worth it. 
So the new rules. Uh, before, 6,000 tourists would come to this beach every single day. Now, it's been limited to 300 people per day. And you have to register on an app. And to understand how that works, I'm gonna give you a short description. Thailand is hoping to make Maya Bay a model for sustainable tourism and has implemented new rules. Whereas before Maya Bay was a free-for-all and a wild party zone, it is now organized to protect the environment first. No more than 375 tourists will be allowed to visit the bay at a single time. Boats are no longer allowed to enter the bay or dock on the beach. Instead, they are redirected to a floating dock situated on the opposite side of Maya Bay. Before arriving at Maya Bay, tourists must reserve a time slot by using the app QQ, that's Q-U-E-Q. -E Visiting times are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Swimming in Maya Bay is not allowed and drones are not allowed. For the trip to Maya Bay from PP, I skipped the organized tours and hired a long tail boat. The cost was $50 for four hours. And if you leave before sunrise, arrange a boat the day before. It takes about 45 minutes to arrive at Maya Bay dock where you are greeted by Thai officials who are coordinating the new plan for Maya Bay tourism. You then proceed to purchase a pass before entering the park, where you walk about 10 minutes to the beach. The walkway is beautiful and has conveniences of restrooms and seating areas. Getting to PP from Phuket takes approximately one to two hours. I chose to travel by speedboat from Phuket to PP. The one-way ticket was 700 baht or $20. It was about a 90 minute trip the departure point from Phuket is Rosada Pier, which is located near Phuket town. Check the weather though. If the waters are rough, it may be best to take the ferry. We hit bad weather, which made for an unpleasant trip with screaming kids and half the boat vomiting. I chose to return on the ferry, which took a little bit longer, but was much more spacious, enjoyable, and comfortable with an added bonus of a snack shop and fresh coffee. Once arriving at PP, I chose a hotel near the pier. Compared to the past 20 years in pre-pandemic tourism, PP has a slower pace now. Many shops are closed, walkways are less packed, and due to the pandemic and lockdowns, there is an overall feeling of fatigue from the local residents with reserved enthusiasm. Regardless of the tough times, you still feel the Thai warm heartedness if not from the adults, definitely from the local kids. And already, some of the tourists showing up at PP make it feel like nothing has ever changed since pre-pandemic times. Many businesses remain closed. Businesses on the main thoroughfares benefit from foot traffic, but the symbols of the pandemic and the devastated economy remain with many shops abandoned. With the new slower pace of PP, it is a nice time to visit, especially if you don't like crowds. I imagine even some of the locals prefer it this way. For a list of links on Google Maps to all the locations of this video, go to the uh, description. The first one in Maya, in New Year, yeah, two thousand two. Okay, bye. -bye.